So this question starts off with a system of equations. It looks like this second equation can be simplified. So I'm going to start off by treating this question like a simplify question or basically using the simplify strategy. That strategy really just says if you're ever given an equation or an expression that can be simplified, you should do so. So this first equation, y equals x squared, that that's simplified, at least for y. Um, the second equation, however, is not, right? So I'm going to take this 2y plus 6 equals 2 parentheses x plus 3, and I'm going to simplify this equation. So 2y plus 6 looks good, but now I'm going to distribute this 2 across the parentheses here, leaving me with 2x plus 6. I can subtract 6 from both sides, leaving me with 2y equals 2x. Divide both sides by 2, in which case I have y equals x. And now I have a simplified version, right? All of that that they originally gave us really just was y equals x, right? So I'm going to write that over here. So I now can show my two very simplified um, equations for my system of equations. So whenever you're solving a system of equations question, there are two methods to think about, two methods to keep in mind. The first is elimination. And the second is substitution. All right, so elimination is when you choose a variable from the two, um, from the system of equations, right, y or x. You choose whichever variable you want to eliminate. Um, and we can actually use that here. So let's say I have y equals x squared, and then I have y equals x. Well, I see that if I subtract the bottom equation, from the top equation, right, making that y negative and x negative, that that would eliminate the y variable, leaving me with 0 here. And on the right-hand side, I'd have x squared minus x. Now, what can I do with x squared minus x? Well, I can simplify this or factor it. If I factor x squared minus x, the greatest common factor there is x. So I can pull out an x or factor out an x, and inside my parentheses, I'd have x minus 1. And of course, this is all still equal to 0. Because now this is fully factored, I can set each component equal to 0 separately. So I can say, well, if 0 equals x times x minus 1, that means that x can equal 0. And it also means that x minus 1, no need for parentheses, actually. I'm not sure why. I wrote that um, x minus 1 could equal 0. So I have one solution for x equaling 0. And of course, over here, I can add 1 to both sides and be left with x equals positive 1. Now, the question tells us that x is greater than 0. So that means I'm across this out here. And that the only value for x based upon what we just solved um, that works for this particular question is x equals 1. Now, the question wants to know, well, what is the value of x, y? Well, if x is equal to 1, what is y equal to? Well, again, I go back to one of my original things, either first or second. I'm going to choose the second one because it's a lot easier, right? We have that y equals x, right? So I know that y equals 1 because x is 1. So now I know that y is 1 and x is 1. So again, going back to the question, the question wants us to figure out, well, what is x times y? Well, that's just 1 times 1. So the answer is one, and therefore answer choice A is the correct answer.